Happy Memorial Day, Calvary. I'm John Waller. Thanks again for tuning in. We've got a great lineup for you today. We're going to kick it off with our own CBC Men's Quartet doing some Southern Gospel, followed by a tribute for Memorial Day and a message. After the message, stick around for some new music from George and Teresa Newber. You're going to love it. Have a great and safe weekend. We miss you, and we look forward to seeing you all very soon. This weekend, we think of Memorial Day. It's the day that we honor those who have served in the armed forces and have fallen as a result of it. My three brothers served uh, in the United States Armed Forces, and I'm very proud of them. You know, it's a shame that often soldiers are not given the, uh, the credit and the honor that they deserve. You know, you may not you may not agree with the war that they fought or died in, and that's your constitutional right. However, 
uh, we should still give respect and honor to those who have made that ultimate sacrifice. You know, if you're going to be a soldier, it requires discipline, it requires dedication. Likewise, if you're going to be a soldier in the Lord's army, it requires the same. But most of all, I'd like to suggest to you that it requires faith. Think about it. Um, it requires faith because the sinner is saved by faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we're saved by grace through faith. Um, the believer has to walk by faith. That's what we're told in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that we walk by faith, not by sight. Another thought is the believer is to live out their daily life uh, by faith. Romans 1.17 says the just shall live by faith. To be a soldier in, in God's army, it requires living by faith. In Matthew chapter 8, the story is told of a soldier who sends an entourage to Jesus in order to inquire something of him. And I think that we learn something in this story. And I'd like to suggest that we learn the quality and characteristics that a soldier must have. Now, there are four I'd like to suggest to you. First, I'd like to suggest that soldiers need to possess a heart of compassion. And so Jesus comes into Capernaum and this centurion's entourage comes to him and uh, they say to him, Lord, my servant is sick. Can you heal him? Jesus is approached by those speaking on behalf of this, of this centurion. And, and, and these centurions were officers in the Roman army. They were in fact the backbone of the army. They may have been recruited uh, outside of, of Jerusalem, maybe in modern day Syria or places like that. Uh, they were commanders over men. Uh, they were soldiers. They were uh, military might. And this man, with all of his military might, still had care and compassion, not for another free man, but for his servant. Uh, without compassion, there wouldn't be any charity. Without compassion, there would be no one helping uh, the sick or the shut in or those who are poor and less fortunate. Uh, so this soldier possessed compassion. And I think that that's a character trait that we need to have as soldiers of the cross. Secondly, soldiers need to possess a heart of, of humility. Uh, Jesus offers to go to this man's house. This man, as Jesus is on the way, sends another entourage that says, listen, uh, don't come into my house. He felt a sense of unworthiness. He felt a sense of this holy man should not come under my roof because this is not a holy place. So while Jesus is nearing the house, uh, these folks come speaking on behalf of the centurion and they say, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. By the way, just like the centurion, we're not worthy. Uh, it takes coming to the realization of our own unworthiness before we can receive Christ's worthy gift. It, it comes... Um, we have to come to the realization that we need forgiveness before we can be forgiven. And just like the centurion, our house was dirty and filthy and filled with junk. The house of our heart was messy before Christ came in. But we have to humble ourselves in order to allow, allow him to come in and to clean it up. So a soldier like the centurion needs to possess a heart of humility. Here's a third thought. Soldiers need to possess a proper perspective. Now this soldier in my mind had a proper perspective. Uh, he understood that the emperor had all power and that he imparted some of that power to him so that he could command a, a, a legion of men. Likewise, he must have reasoned that Jesus had an authority so that he could just speak the word and that his servant would be healed. Jesus had authority that was given to him by the Father like the emperor had given authority to this centurion. And the commander had reason. This man has authority. So the soldier needs to have a proper perspective to know who the one is who has authority. 
Here's a fourth thought. Soldiers need to possess faith in God. The soldier said, Lord, just say the word and my servant will be healed. Which, which prompted Jesus to marvel and wonder at the faith of this man. In fact, Jesus says, listen, I haven't seen anybody else uh, in Jerusalem with faith like this. He, he meant by that statement that he hadn't even seen a Jew with as much faith as this Gentile was exhibiting at that moment. We need to have faith. Enlistment in the Lord's army requires faith to live from day to day. I call it living from faith to faith. What that means is it requires faith at the beginning. That's justification. It's by faith we're saved. By the grace of God. But it also means that there's faith in the middle. Uh, we call that sanctification. That daily God is setting us apart in order to walk and to live our lives as committed soldiers of the cross. But it also means faith all the way to the end. We call that glorification. On that day when the saints of God are kneeling in the air, it means that you will be kneeling with them. Faith brought you all the way from the beginning, took you all the way through, and took you all the way to glory. That is the faith that we need. Soldiers need to possess a few things we've learned. They need to possess a heart of compassion. They need to possess an attitude of humility. They need to possess a proper perspective and they need to have faith in God. There's a quote that I like uh, from Crawford Loritz. Listen to these words. He says, there is no such thing as courage without mission. There is no such thing as a faith without challenge. You are courageous for the purpose of fulfilling a mission. There is no faith without the challenge to have faith to believe something. Your mission is to have faith in Christ to proclaim his gospel, but first of all, to believe it by faith. It is the type of faith by which the just shall live. It is the type of faith by which believers work. It is the type of faith by which soldiers serve. And it is the type of faith by which soldiers die. There are those soldiers of the cross who have given their lives in order to serve Christ and to proclaim his gospel. So on this Memorial Day, as we remember those men and women who have served and have fallen in order to protect this country and to give us the freedoms that we enjoy, don't forget that there are also soldiers of the cross who have fallen. The difference is those soldiers who have fallen in Christ are now in glory and we shall see them again. Just a thought from the heart and mind of Victor. Blessed be your name In the land that is plentiful Where your streams of abundance flow Blessed be your name Blessed be your name When I'm found in the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the dark Blessed be your name on the road marked 
with suffering For there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Thank you.